Welcome to Milan, Italy, where it's not quite warm enough to wear a t-shirt outside, but here we are. I'm on my little balcony here in my apartment that I am renting for a couple of days, and I'm so excited to show you guys all there is to see and do in a couple of days in Milan. I have been here before, so there'll be a few revisits, but uh, worry not, we are going to eat, drink, be merry, and learn some history and see this beautiful city. So let's go, start with some coffee. Hi, I'm Laura. 11 years ago, my boyfriend Luke and I set off for a gap year that accidentally changed our lives. Since we left home in 2010, we have lived in New Zealand, Australia, South Korea, Mexico, and are now living in Lithuania. These videos are a small window into the adventures we seek along the way. The first stop of the day was for coffee. I'd read about this spot that wasn't too far from my apartment that was roasting its own beans and serving up a seriously good coffee. It absolutely did not disappoint and gave me the caffeine kick I needed to start exploring Milan. I started my tour right outside the coffee shop by wandering through Chinatown. There were tons of restaurants and cafes around here, but since it was still quite early, most weren't open yet. It was also just a really nice place to see some of the city's architecture. I am walking along Corso Sempione, which is this nice boulevard. There's a tram that runs down the middle, so if you didn't want to walk, you could take the tram down from Chinatown to our next destination. This is so nice. Is there anything better than walking around a city with nowhere to be? It's such a luxury. I walked down Corso Sempione, taking in the views until I reached Parco Sempione, where I saw this huge monument and arches. Now we are in Parco Sempione, attached to Corso Sempione, and on the other side, I don't know if you can see it, just over here, is the Sforzesco, Sforzesco Castle, Castello Sforzesco. Okay, it's there's a lot of consonants in there. I will <laughs> put it here for you. Uh, and it is so beautiful. It's one of the sort of main things to do here in Milan. And uh, so I'm gonna stroll through the park to the other side and see the castle. So just for a little context about how quiet the park is, it's Monday at nine o'clock in the morning, so we'll see if we're probably at work. Um, but there are lots of dog walkers. There are a little couple of joggers. There's like an exercise group. Um, but imagine doing all that with a castle behind you. That's so cool. Castello Sforzesco is a medieval fortification that was built in the 15th century by Francesco Sforza, who was the Duke of Milan at the time. It continued to grow in the 16th and 17th centuries, and at one point was one of the largest citadels in all of Europe. Gotta love Italy. You can just walk right through the middle for free. Like, it's a, it's a thoroughfare. all this walking, I'm ready for some breakfast, but that castle is very cool. Uh, traditionally, breakfast around Italy is like small and sweet, so we're gonna take part in that. <laughs> Incredible, flaky, buttery. The filling was, oh my god, 
they had so many choices for the different flavors. You could have a plain one, they had vegan ones, they had chocolate, um, cream, uh, citrus kind of flavor. And the pistachio that I had was amazing. It wasn't too sweet. Oh, it was so thick. But the coffee was also excellent. And it was so busy. And it's so affordable. $1.50 for a cappuccino. I think an espresso is only one euro, so coffee is great. So one place that I want to mention um, that's in this sort of region of town that you would want to add to your itinerary uh, if you were traveling on any day except a Monday is the Santa Maria della Grazie. It's a convent that is home to the original Last Supper painting. Uh, it's amazing. You have to pre-book. I'll put the link in the description box below with the location of all the places in this video, but um, yeah, you have to pre-book. It's not a COVID thing. It's a preservation of the painting thing so you definitely don't want to miss out on that I'm kind of bummed that I won't get to see it but it's here in Milan We are now at Piazza Sant'Ambrogio, uh, which is where you will find the Basilica di Sant'Ambrogio, and uh, it's the patron saint of Milan, so it's a pretty special place here in the city, and well, we're seeing it's so beautiful. I mean, we haven't even seen the whole thing yet, so let's, let's go in. The Basilica of Sant'Ambrogio is one of the oldest churches in Milan. It was originally built by St. Ambrose between 379 and 386 AD, near where many martyrs who had been persecuted by the Romans were buried. In fact, the first name of the church was the Basilica of Martyrs. You can't come to Milan and not shop, right? I just got myself this little scarf for two euros from a vintage shop. I'm gonna check out a few more that I've uh, read about online. The street doesn't look like much, but I've read that it is home to some of the best vintage shops in Milan. Let's go. There were so many incredible shops on that street. Two that I was really looking forward to going to were actually closed, um, which is a bummer because I think those would have been good places to get stuff that would be a little bit more around my price bracket. But if you're looking for like vintage Prada or uh, Gucci, that sort of stuff, those other shops that I went into had some beautifully curated vintage outfits and dresses and shoes and bags. So, uh, at a much discounted rate, obviously, like it, it wasn't crazy expensive but 150 dollars for for the dresses and stuff like that euros i should say um yeah pretty amazing i have done a lot of walking this morning so i'm about to head to the metro go back to my apartment for a little while recharge my phone and my legs and uh, head back in i walked along a few different streets with more stunning architecture to enjoy along the way until I reached the nearest metro station. The metro is really easy to navigate. I literally just used Google Maps and put in where I was, where I wanted to go, and it told me where to change and everything. It's very clearly marked in the subway. So as you walk around, you can look at the maps and see that you're going in the right direction before you get on the subway. I got a day pass, which was seven euros, 
which you have to kind of take the metro a lot to make that worthwhile because a single trip is only two euros. Um, so I, I figure I'm gonna take the metro a fair bit for the rest of the day because I've already walked like 15,000 steps. <laughs> um, and it's just easy to hop around. The good thing about getting an all day pass is you can be kind of indulgent about like getting on and only going one or two stops instead of maybe walking for 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of the day. Let's, uh, let's get exploring and finally see the main event, the Duomo, um, but probably first gonna eat a sandwich, so. <laughs> If you came here just to see the Duomo, uh, there are chapters, uh, so hopefully you've already skipped ahead to that one. For lunch, I headed for a panini at a place I had read a lot about, De Santis, which had a nice selection of panini options. I went for the Parma ham with mozzarella, brie, and truffle oil, which was toasted to perfection and tasted incredible. After that, it was finally time to take the metro to Milan's most famous site, the Duomo. The Milan Cathedral, which is officially called the Metropolitan Cathedral Basilica of the Nativity of St. Mary, or simply Duomo for short, is the official cathedral church of Milan. This enormous cathedral took nearly 600 years to build, with initial construction beginning in 1386 and its final details coming together in 1965. It is the largest cathedral in Italy, including being larger than St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City. While sizes and positions and rankings are still a matter of debate, it is in the top three largest churches in the world. Even just to enter the cathedral, you need to have a ticket. The entry to the cathedral costs five euros. You can climb up the steps of the Duomo to reach the top for 15 euros, or you can pay 20 euros to take the elevator to the top. Either way, you get to walk along the rooftop of the cathedral. The views are pretty incredible, but since I'd already done it once before and the weather wasn't particularly amazing, I skipped out on going on the rooftop this time around. Right next to the Duomo is another famous spot to explore, and that is the Galleria Vittorio Emanuele II. Here you'll find high-end shops like Prada, Louis Vuitton, and upscale restaurants and cafes where you can enjoy a cocktail or a glass of Prosecco while doing some fantastic people watching. Most people simply walk through the Galleria, taking in the sights and stopping to spin on their heels on top of this bull's bits. Absolutely every video, blog post, article that I read recommended this place, Luini, for the Panzerotti. So I got a baked one and I'm gonna test it out and see if it's worth all the hype. <laughs> It's not that the panzerotti wasn't good, it was great. I mean, it's like a piece of pizza folded in half. It had good cheese, the dough was really soft and fluffy. The cheese was nice, it was still warm when you ate it, so that was pleasant. Like, it, I think it's just, it wasn't like life-changing and uh, certainly not even the best thing I've had today. So it's just one of those places that's become like famous. You have to go there and I fell into the trap, but uh, go there or don't go there. It's really close to the Duomo. Uh, they're really cheap, they're like two fifty for uh, for one, and uh, it was a good afternoon pick-me-up, so yeah, you can't go wrong. It's so quiet around here. We are headed into this basilica, also a basilica, San Lorenzo Maggiore, Maggiore and uh, the altar is supposed to have like a cool sort of visual effect that uh, makes it a little bit of a trick to the eye, so let's see if it's open and uh, if we can go in and see. I didn't see the 
altar or whatever it was meant to be in there because there's so much construction going on. Looks like they're like trying to fix the dome. Uh, but it's a really, really interesting place. It has a list of plaques that have history about Milan and about the Basilica and the role it's played across the history of, of Milan. And yeah, that was really worth, worth going in there for and reading about that and getting more. The last stop of the day before pizza was to the canal in the southern part of the city called Naviglio Grande. This is the place to come for aperitivos in the evenings. Most bars here put on a sort of buffet and you pay about 10 euros for a drink and you get unlimited access to the different foods on offer, like focaccia or olives, cheese, meats, sometimes even little slices of pizza or risotto. I was a little bit early for aperitivos and I didn't want to spoil dinner, so I just enjoyed strolling along the canal and then headed to meet some friends. Well, it's time to say goodbye to Milan. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss the pastries and the pizza, but this trip isn't over yet. I'm headed to Bergamo. Uh, this is another city that's only about a half an hour away by train, so be sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss out on that video. I'm headed there this afternoon and I'm excited to check it out. I've never been there before. Don't really know much about it other than it's walled. Hopefully it doesn't rain too much, <laughs> but anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really supports my channel and I will see you next time. Bye.